Hi, good afternoon, it's Jim from the Math Star Observatory. Guys, I am delighted in the comment section on yesterday's video. You know, if you've got time, just read some of the comments that people had written there. You know, it really makes me feel that we've got a good crowd of people following, uh, you know, the observatory on YouTube. And uh, it was really nice to read those comments. Um, and again, you know, if you want to write a comment, you can just tell me anything. You know, I, I am always interested in what people uh, think on the topic of the magnetic pole shift and current events. And, um, you know, I do sometimes try and, you know, uh, get through the comments and answer uh, a few of them. But, you know, I just want to say a big thank you to those people that took the time out. And I enjoyed reading the comments, as I always do. Uh, but yesterday, I think, was a little bit special. Uh, because people had really made an effort, you know, to almost introduce themselves to me. It was great. And, um, you know, I, I can definitely re relate to a lot of the things that were said in the comments. It is real strange times we're living in. And, yeah, you know, it is unusual for the fact that, you know, uh, we are going through currently a magnetic reversal on the planet. Um, big thanks to those as well uh, that you know chose to step forward and support the observatory uh, with a small donation. You know, you, without you guys, I just suddenly couldn't do what I do here. Um, and it's 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 really great, you know, when people go you know the extra mile to help uh, support us. Um, you know, it requires the observatory more time than it ever has done. Now, it's not just you know monitoring the equipment that we've got here at the observatory it's it's collecting the data from our superstars all around the world bringing that data back to me i process it and then i upload it onto the uh, website that we've got dedicated to the magnetic pole reversal but there is also if you've been on there guys you'll know that uh, there is um, a lot of uh, daily updates on uh, all the other anomalies that are taking place on our planet so, you know, it's almost like a one-stop shop for anything to do with, um, you know, geomechanics or geo-anomalies on our planet that is taking place on a daily basis. You know, we try and make it really interesting for people uh, and informative. And, you know, if you haven't already, check out the Learning Centre. There's some good videos that, you know, describes actually, the, you know, the possibilities of what is taking place right now with our planet and uh yeah you know if you want to become a supporter the link's down there of course so let's get on with it so the reason why um i'm gonna you know just read through quickly uh this forbes um release on the magnetic north pole it's just really a testament to, to show anyone that if you do a quick google search like i did just uh and you're looking for you know um some of the other organisations and people that are doing research on the magnetic north poles uh, or the pole migration, you know, if you just type in January, uh, July, like I did, and uh, the year 2020 magnetic pole or magnetic north pole migration, you'll find articles. Um, but for some reason, they don't always uh, appear in mainstream media. And you would think that, you know, such a rare anomaly like the magnetic north pole migration would be covered, um, you know, on mainstream media at least, you know, at least uh, once a fortnight. Let's hope for it just once a fortnight, you know, just so that people are aware of what's going on. Because there is less than 1% of the 7 billion people on this planet that are actually aware of what's going on. And not only that they are not aware of the implications as a result of the magnetic poles reversing on this planet um, that's causing, you know, direct effects now to even, uh, you know, those people um, uh, that, that are unaware, you know, that it has already directly affected their lives in costs of food, uh, climate change and things like that. Anyhow, let's get into this uh, article. Um, so it's become increasingly clear in recent years that the Earth's magnetic north pole has been moving towards Russia at rather a fast uh, clip. Now a team of researchers believe they've identified the forces that are causing the shift which has implications for everyday navigation and mapping systems among other things. Let's just scroll down a little bit. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field is governed by the flow of material in our core's planet. Well, that's at least a theory. 
and it seems to have uh, competing, uh, competing magnetic blobs uh, along the outer core pulling the mag pulling out the magnetic north pole and I've showed these in recent uh, well I've showed them for a long time now um, but more so this year that's the high intensity over Canada which is weakening and it's also the high intensity in central Russia which is increasing uh, the Earth's magnetic field is governed by the flow of materials in our planet's core uh, this is a theory, and it seems that the competing magnetic blobs along the outer core are pulling at the magnetic north pole. One magnetised patch is beneath Canada, and the other is under Siberia. In the past few decades, the Siberian patch has begun to overpower its opponent in a dramatic fashion. Uh, the planet-scale uh, battle has resulted in the magnetic north pole migrating towards Russia uh, with a quickness. This change in the pattern of flow has weakened the patch under Canada and ever so lightly increased the strength of the patch under Siberia, explains Dr. Phil Livermore. Um, uh, this is why the North Pole has left its historic position over Canada, Arctic and crossed over uh, the international dateline. Uh, North Russia is winning the tug of war, if you like, Dr. Philip. Uh, Livermore uh, of University of Leeds in the UK uh, describes and there's obviously a little map here uh, showing that migration and uh, it goes on to say you know uh, at the turn of the 20th century the magnetic north pole was firmly in Canada Arctic it spent the next century uh, mundering about uh, 10 degrees to the north moving ever closer to the true north pole Around 2001, its movement began to accelerate, and by 2019, the magnetic pole had actually moved all the way north, crossing the international dateline, and has begun travelling on the other side of the globe towards Siberia. The team came to their conclusions by modelling the movement of the molten material inside the planet using data from the European satellite that measures the Earth's magnetic field. I, I gather that what they're talking about there, guys, is the uh, Swarm mission, uh, which is very shortly uh, due to expire, I believe. Uh, uh, the magnetic poles, uh, radical movement has forced updates in the world magnetic models used by scientists, but Living Morse team reports that it's still on the move, and it is, guys. We track it every month and position it. Um, the range of the simple models that capture this process indicate that over the next decade the North Magnetic Pole will continue on its current trajectory, travelling a further 390 to 660 kilometres towards Siberia, they're right. So, you know, what gets me is that, you know, this is a recent article. I believe that it's probably the most recent one I've come across. I suppose if I've done a bit more research I might find others, but this is dated the 7th of May. And... You know, it makes me wonder if only now they're talking about these uh, magnetic blobs. Let me pull up the map so you can see what exactly they're talking about. So these are the two regions that they're talking about in that article. First of all, the weakening uh, intensity over Canada uh, used to be a lot stronger than what it is. And in a little bit, I'll show you in a video just how, it, how fast it's dropping off. Um, and you will also see how fast, at the same time, Russia is gaining uh, you know, that high intensity. But what I can't understand is only why now they're, they're you know, making the connections. We've made these connections for a long time. I was absolutely laughed at by some of these people in these uh, departments when I suggested that the Earth had at one point four magnetic poles, it's now got clearly three magnetic poles and a very low intensity, which has always been known about as, and, and regarded um, as the South Atlantic anomaly. Um, you know, on another map I can show you that, but it's this region here uh, covering uh, Brazil. But I was laughed at. But guys, you know, how, how many times have I done the experiments with two magnets and put the compass in between the two and showed exactly what has been going on? I've been doing this for years now. And these are the people, supposedly leaders of the field, um, you know, only now making, you know, 
joining the dots up and, and, and coming out and telling people that there's a battle of high intensities over the Northern Hemisphere fighting over the magnetic North Pole. And as a result of Russia's high intensity region increasing, that is dragging the pole faster towards it. And at the same time, you know, we've got the reduction over Canada's um, intensity uh, weakening, you know, again, forcing it over towards Russia. It's actually um, just uh, south of the Arctic Circle. It's actually under the Arctic Circle where the magnetic north pole is heading. It's almost uh, central Russia. Uh, but, you know, let's just get rid of this. But why haven't they, uh, you know, these experts, why haven't they, you know, drawn these same conclusions I have years ago? You know, they they are, at the end of the day, paid to do their jobs and they work for these leading organizations such as the European Space Agency, NASA, NOAA, etc. You know, why only now? I, I, I feel is that they don't know. You know, sometimes when people are silent, it's for a reason. And I don't think that they are the best people to be talking about the subject. Um, you know, I've been talking about this subject now for nearly a decade and I, I know some of you guys have been following me from the other channel that we had and you will know that you know over the over the time you know I have actually even myself learned a lot more about the migrating poles uh, to the point now where we've got 30,000 people that tune in now and then uh, to find out the latest on what's going on with the magnetic north pole because it is a slow process but as time goes on and the more equipment that we get out there you know it makes it a little bit more exciting because you know we get to see first and what's going on on the west and uh, east coast of australia you know where that high intensity um, region is creeping up over you know that continent and that's because, you know, we know that the South Pole is also migrating. We don't talk about that, the, that very much. Um, but it's left, you know, the peninsula of uh, Antarctic down there, you know. And um, it is migrating towards um, Australia. And it does look like, you know, Russia and that uh, high intensity just creeping up over Australia now are going to meet at some point and at that point we'll see the interaction between the two poles they will connect but if you get two magnets it's like this if then poles will connect but when they do you will at that point get that reversal so there's what's going to happen here is we know that the where the North Pole is uh, making its way at the moment to that high intensity region over Russia once it gets there it will start then moving faster towards the equatorial region of our planet. Likewise, will the um, high intensity down in the southern hemisphere, and they will come together somewhere around that equatorial region, maybe just north of um, Australia, possibly around the Bali region. And then when that, but then that happens, we're going to get a reversal at some point. But I think um, the party is really going to get started, guys when we get to that 40 degrees mark and you know why that is don't you it's because the magnetic north pole is going to leave the strong field lines and go into those weaker field lines and therefore it is going to accelerate at that point so it's really interesting and uh, interesting for the fact that these big organizations don't really seem to be clear on the subject and even when they are they're very late in the game in making these announcements and it just makes me wonder who's teaching who right now is the citizen science uh, people you know like ourselves uh, here at the observatory uh, they've got a small observatory teeny weeny budget but really packing a bank for you know that book and we are competing with these big organizations that literally have millions and millions of pounds to spend and yet they're always late to the table with information you know, we we beat nasa this year making an announcement that there was a, an uptick in the activity in the magnetic north pole by about a month or so uh, i think maybe you know that was uh, a result of them feeling that they had to say something because I, I i do know that some people from these organizations actually watch these videos guys can you believe that 
I, I would like one day actually to have a conversation with him and I, I think I think the first thing I'd say is what is going on and why is there so little announcements on the on the field of geomagnetics at the moment and why is there so little work being done on one of the rarest anomalies that's taking place on our planet you know and obviously having some you know consequential effects uh to everybody now on the planet you know with results um you know caused by climate change uh cloud seeding you know weather changes season changes and, and sporadic uh changes in temperature daily you know around our planet anyhow guys i will encourage you again you know if you want to talk about anything in the um comment section down below the video you know you're welcome to you know i'm very much interested in you guys that listen to you know these videos and follow us on the topic and i'll just mention briefly you know there is a link down there we did set ourselves um a target this month of trying to raise four thousand pounds for some equipment and it you know we've got like eight or nine days left haven't we it's not going to happen um but you know we will run it um, until we do raise the money for that equipment and you know I'll tell you why I mean just reading the comment section yesterday in yesterday's video tells me that when we do start doing live broadcasts on air um, we're going to uh, draw a lot more people in to the topic of uh, magnetic reversal and it gives you guys an opportunity to you know um, ask some questions to me you know i'll give you my feedback on those on those topics you might want to know a specific part about you know what we do and 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 you know where things are with the the magnetic poles on this planet and that will be the opportunity when we start doing these live videos to actually you know answer these questions for you guys but you know more than anything i just want to thank you know you guys out there that are helping support the channel because you know nobody would be uh, informed ahead of these organisations like we do actually here uh, if it weren't for you guys. So you know, if you or if you've you know thought about you know contributing some cash towards the uh, observatory, but never have, you know, now is a perfect time, guys. I'll just say that, and I'll just say this: that you know there is a lot worse of things that you can do uh, than support a public. Uh, funded observatory you know it's funded by you guys the public and that's why you get every scrap of information that i feel is relevant for you to um, know about not like these organizations that sit there you know on the back burner not saying much at all so okay uh links down there i'll say what i usually do you have an amazing day and look after your loved ones and i'll catch up with you perhaps tomorrow uh, with an equally um, you know, interesting topic on this subject so guys bye for now